Next, we've got Simon Byrne, uh, who's been a longtime contributor to Julia Numerics and performance issues. Uh, he works on the Klima Climate Modeling Project, and he's going to talk about uh, parallel profiling. Thank you. So, uh, profiling parallel Julia code. Uh, so, with Insight Systems and NVTX.jl. Uh, so, M Insight Systems is an instrumenting profiler. Um, what does that mean? Well, a sampling profiler is what we have in uh, profile .at profile, uh, which basically takes snapshots of what your code at certain points of time, which is very convenient. You don't have to do anything. You just call it, and it works. Um, and it sort of answers the question, where am I spending all my time? Uh, an instrumenting profiler requires you to instrument your code, which basically means you stick annotations in your actual code. Um, and, but it can answer the more complicated question is, what is actually what things are happening? When are they happening? What order? How long do they take? Um, in particular, this is very helpful for uh, parallel code because things often don't happen in the order you intend them to. Uh, Nsight Systems is an instrumenting profiler from NVIDIA. Uh, it runs on Linux and Windows and also has a viewer for Mac. Um, it has very good parallelism support. Um, as you would expect, it supports CUDA, uh, but it also supports just multi-threading and multi-processing and MPI. Um, so you don't actually need a GPU to use it. Um, and you can download it for free from this from their website, although you need to just sign up for an account. Um, NVTX is their instrumentation package. So it's a C header-only library, um, which usually you'd annotate C code. Uh, but you can also build it as a shared library. And so we nvtx.jl is a package of Julia bindings for NVTX uh, that uh, yeah uh, was originally in this living CUDA.jl, um, uh, thanks to Tim. And then we, I sort of adapted it, expanded it a bit, and I wanted to use it without CUDA, so I moved it to its own package, and now it lives in a separate package. Uh, and the main idea is that you, it gives you, provides a very high level um, macro that you can annotate uh, your code with, which the profiler can then access. Um, and we bundle a JLL with it as well, so you don't actually have to download it. It's all included. Um, and it also includes a small hook to instrument the Julia garbage collector, which is very handy for a lot of cases. Um, and the other thing is you can include it as a package dependent. So we make it, um, it's safe to include as a package dependency, even on systems where the uh, profiler is not available. So you can, it's just most operations become no ops then. Okay, so basics. Um, so there's sort of three main macros. Um, at mark just instruments a single snapshot event. Um, at range is you put it around a block of code. So start you know, around an expression. Um, and there's at annotate, which is similar to at range, except you put it outside a function call, function definition, and then it puts the at range inside the function call, essentially. So, um, uh, and so here's a very simple example. Um, we define a custom module, load the MVTX package, we annotate a simple function called, which annotates sleep, uh, and then we put the um, at range around its loop, which calls the function. Um, so we can attach some metadata to it, which is very handy. So Things like domain, which we automatically just attach the module. We define a, a default domain for every module, which is usually how we group code. So that sort of fits with that analogy. Uh, you can generate a message, which we just use the func the because it's macros. We can define things like we can actually just put the line number and file file and line number there by default. Uh, you can things you can give colors. We just generate a unique one for every uh, annotation, uh, and you can put some small payload. I attach like a payload information there if you want to sort of track attack other things. Um, it tends to be fairly low overhead. I didn't do any rigorous benchmarking, but it's about 20 nanoseconds if you're not using the profiler at all. And it seems to be about 60 nanoseconds or so when you're profiling. So it's, there's you know, some overhead, but it's very it's pretty low. Uh, and so how you use it? Uh, well, you call NSYS profile, um, dash dash trace MVTX, and then run your code. Uh, and that will annotate it. And so you'll get a, it'll generate a report. You can open the report in the viewer. And it looks something like this. And so you can see there's two threads um, I'm using there. And um, they have, uh, yeah, you can see some that there's the outer loop is annotated on the main thread and the um, so the individual function calls are annotated on the inner loop. Um, and one particular nice thing about Insight is it actually supports, uh, th uh, not you have non-overlapping tasks. And so if the Julia task, uh, the Switch a, switches th uh, task, they'll, it's okay if they don't overlap. In fact, they can even switch threads. So you can sometimes end up with tasks that switch threads and Insight supports that as well. 
Uh, so parallelism, so that's threaded parallelism. So distributed.jl, um, it works as well. So just uh, run uh, your distributed.jl code. And as long as they're all on the same process, uh, on the same um, node, so that we don't support, it doesn't support distributed processes, um, it'll um, happily identify child processes. And so you can profile distributed.jl code. Um, the motivation for me was personally for uh, profiling MPI code. Uh, and so to do that, there's two ways. Uh, the simple one is you do similar to that, you the profiler, which you have the profiler, which runs the MPI launcher, which runs the program. So it might be NSYS profile, something like this. And that'll still give you, a, like before, will give you a single file with um, all the processes annotated. There's actually a more complicated way, which is, um, but that only, again, sorry, the first one only works if you're on a single, uh, everything's on a single uh, um, node. If you want to do actually fully distributed uh, run, then you can put the the uh, profiler inside the launcher, uh, and that what you'll get is now one profile per process. Um, but it has a very handy the viewer has a very nice multi-report view where it'll like stick them all and you can open up and view them all individually. Um, and so here's a nice picture from our own code, uh, and you can see sort of a two zoom in and out, and you can see we can attach multi all these different processes are all visible within the one thing. And it also annotates the MPI ranks by default. So you can see what, uh, which process is going on where. Uh, I mentioned you can profile the Julia garbage collector. Uh, so we add a, build a small library which hooks into a, there's a one hook into the Julia garbage collector which will start when it starts and when it stops. And so we build a small library which uh, hooks into there. Uh, and so if you set this environment variable, you can also activate it manually. Um, whenever the garbage collector is invoked, it will trigger a range uh, and will show up here. And this was actually the, the actually the reason I actually built this was because I wanted to see when the garbage collector was being invoked in MPI processes, and so it's a very it's very nice for this. Um, so you can see here we have all these things, and suddenly everything stops. One process here is stuck in the MPI wait all. That's because it's waiting on communication from this top process, which is doing a GC. So that was what I wanted to be able to find out. And yes, uh, and many thanks to Valentin for pointing out that hook. That was very helpful. Um, and as you would expect, it supports CUDA and CUDA.jl. Um, and so if you just, um, it will show the CUDA uh, kernel launches uh, along top. So you can see now there's an extra CUDA API line here with the CUDA kernel launches. Um, and it traces, what's nice is it traces both the CUDA activity on both the host and the device. So these are the, um, in particular, you'll notice, see this little box here, you have to expand that out because the, uh, it matches the ranges both on the hosts, so those range annotations are on the host and the device. And often, you know, you typically want the, actually what is happening on the device. And to give you an example, is that what's happening on the host can be very deceptive. So in this particular example, if you look at the top one, you would think this blue box is probably the worst one. Um, but when you look on the device, you can see it's actually these uh, red ones. Are, the blue one's almost negligible. It's this tiny gap here, and the, the red ones are actually what's taking up all my time. Um, so make sure you click that little expand button so you can see what's uh, what's actually taking time. Uh, minor usage tips, uh, the profiler does have some overhead um, itself. Uh, in particular, this tends to appear as sort of frequent pauses. I think we saw about one millisecond every 60 milliseconds or so. Uh, and the easy fix here is just to make sure you have an extra CPU core assigned for your profiler. If you're doing this on a, some sort of cluster, there's typical ways to reserve cores and bind the cores to so you can, if you bind a cause to each task, that will ensure that everything gets sort of, uh, assigned nicely. Um, the profiles can get very big, so don't try and run it for too long. NVIDIA say they only support up to 10 minutes. It will go longer, you'll just get very large files. Um, and there's a neat feature, you can export the profiles to uh, SQLite, so you can uh, do sort of analysis for that. Um, related efforts, uh, there's other profiles out there, other parallel profilers as well, uh, Score P by Carsten. Uh, so score p is a big, uh, sorry, score p.jl, which is interfaces with score p um, by Carsten, who is, um, is a very similar MPI type profiler. And there's uh, uh, Intel, I'm I'm not sure, so someone pronounced it ITAPI yesterday, but the Intel TT, ITT, ITT API, which is a the Intel's uh, sort of a instrumentation for, Julie, for Intel's VTune profiler. Um, so Valentin and uh, Tim have done a fair bit of work wrapping that as well. Um, and I mean, so some, there's also been, I mean, we saw, there's been a lot of effort recently on instrumenting the Julia runtime. So that's separate than the GC one I mentioned. Um, 
I would love to be able to hook into that. Um, so currently there's Tracy and Intel ITT support for that. Um, and we've just had some discussions about how we could build a sort of generic interface so we could also profile the rest of the Julia runtime. Um, and then some other things I'd like to tackle, um, interactive profiling. You can actually do this through the CUDA package. The CUDA at profile will run that, will let you do this interactively with the REPL. Um, but I should probably put this actually in the MPTX package as well. We'd, um, we mentioned the common instrumentation, API, uh, common instrumentation API so that other packages can instrument and then use different profilers. And finally, some sort of profile analysis tool for similar benchmark tools and get you the nice right. histograms. I'm going to have to call time there. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.